Hello, this is the Elite Gamer here. Last night I asked a particular friend of mine who's who's like family to me what she'd like me to review. Now I understand this particular friend of mine is very fond of Harry Potter, yet I've nothing in the Harry Potter department to review. So I'm gonna review something else that my friend likes. And this and this is a new feature from Elite Gamer, which will be called Books vs. Televisations. In the first episode of Books vs. Televisations on the Elite Gamer show will be none other than R. L. Stein's Goosebumps, that goes next door. R. L. Stein, Robert Lawrence Stein, Stein writing books at the age of nine, um, rather than go out and play with his friends. He wasn't to know that in a couple of years time he would go on to be not just the master but the undisputed father of one of the greatest books of all time. A book that combined children's literature and horror genre and that my friends, whether you loved it or hated it, was Goosebumps. Now the plot and story re revolve around a 12 year old girl called Hannah Fairchild who um, she wakes up like we all do at the start of the day, whether we're male or female, whatever, and um, ends up and ends up living her life and doing the things she enjoys doing, thinking that she's living in premium, but seemingly oblivious to the knowledge above all else that that's not the case. But it's not long until she finds out the awful truth. So um, anyway, well before this, she's getting really angry and irritated because she's writing letters to her friends and she's getting really annoyed because they're not responding. Um, thinking that they don't care about her when that's not the case. They know more than what she does and I, th that I think that she can't finds, kind of finds that hard to handle at the time. Then if that's not enough, there's also um, this other thing when she ra ends up running into Danny Anderson, a boy who is very... he's a new guy on the block, he's moved in with his mum in, in a house literally across the road from Hannah or a couple of blocks away. Uh, initially she ends up becoming fearful of Danny, thinking him to be a ghost, in which she ends up doing investigations and then um, when the investigations don't work out to her um, advantage, she ends up literally going into an array of wild accusations, basically accusing him of being one. But even before, well, before she finds out that she is one, and how she comes to deal with that, um, really made it work with the televisation, which we'll get to later. But I'm not, I oh, will go over that later on. But um, what really made this work? with this, this particular two bits I'm going to go into in the book. Um, the first part when Hannah and Danny are basically saying the same thing but in a totally different way, saying well, how come we're both the same age? How come I go to the same school you do? Yet you don't know my friends and I don't know yours. Um, initially in the book this is how Hannah finds out she's a ghost in a total freak accident. Her and Danny end up playing football in Danny's garden. Both of them end up going for the ball when Danny goes flat on his face. Hannah runs to his aid and rescue to help him up to his feet, being vain. As she grabs out, lunges out to grab his hand and hold him back to his feet, her hand goes right through him, telling Danny and Hannah all everything she needs to know. Danny's not the ghost, Hannah is. Initially, Danny runs away like a man possessed, but I mean, come on, who wouldn't? It's a point of principle, you, you will run from something like that because it's perfectly normal. It's a part of being human. We all, where everyone's, the whole point of being human is they all fear what they don't understand, and that's what makes them human at the end of the day. And then on top of that, there's a lot of, another difference I must forget to say about this book is that in the book, Hannah's been dead five years, whereas in the televisation, she's been dead three years. Um, but just before I briefly 
delve into the televisation, just a few other things I want to say. Now, I said what I liked about this book. Now, I'll say what I hate about it. Well, let's see. Um, there's the two annoying brothers she has, Bill and Herb, who really slowed down the pathos of this book and really tested my patience beyond comprehension in putting it down well before I even got past to the last page. That's strike one. There's the lovely parents which never made it into the televisation until somewhere near the end. Um, parents are a lovely thing to have in our life, in any life, whether you're male or female or whatever. Um, th at the end of the day, parents nag us. It's not because they, they're trying to be spiteful or annoying, it's because they care. It's because they love us. And if they didn't nag us, they wouldn't care what we do. Um, see, but even the charming parents aren't enough to save this book from utter destruction in my review. So that's strike two. And then on top of that there's the aggravating postman to postmaster going by the name of Chesney, who is very uh, arrogant and is look pretty much a bully in this book, which is he's so anti ch anti children or anti childrenator that um he's quite happy to see children off with a shotgun. God blow anyone else would just fall for not knowing better, I would have thought he was picking up where Agatha Trunchbull had left off from Rodell's Matilda. So, right, that's what I thought about the book in general as a, re as a um, review topic in the book department. Now, now for the initial review of the book. Uh, not the book, the tele I said televisation. Now for the review of the televisation. Based upon the book by R.L. Stein, The Ghost Next Door. Now, there's a lot to be said about this televisation, but I haven't got really a lot of time to say it, so let's just see what I can do to sort of do its conceivable justice in the best way how. Now, just like the book, Hannah Fairchild wakes up after having a bad dream, but with a big significant difference above all else. When Anna Fairchild wakes up in the televisation, it's quite a shock because she's the only one in the house. And plus, on top of that, um, there's three other things I, I really love about this televisation, which really make it work for me. Uh, um, a, um, the characters have more time to shine. B, um, it's just the best thing of all and see that lovely piano music sang, um, played by the lady who played Hannah Fairchild was just beautiful and immaculate and relaxing in the same moment but what I really enjoyed about this was the fact that it, sound, it seemed to play more on the emotions of Hannah and Danny because for instance when Danny ends up finding out she's a ghost he wants, li has, he wants little to nothing to do with Hannah so um Hannah ends up going to gain more to the shadow and being manipulated into it by nearly killing Danny to some extent. In the end she realises that the shadow is trying to use her for its own ill-gotten gain and decides to do what she was sent here to do. To stop Danny from dying in an accident the same way she did. So in a nutshell, this was my review of Goosebumps, The Ghost Next Door in the in what I call Books vs. Televisations. But the greatest message I think this sends to everyone, both big and small, young and old, is that no matter how bad you're feeling on a bad day, or as bad as a day can get, it's, it's, pro, it's books and TV shows or televisations like this that make you remind you of how of how grateful you anyone should be at the thought of being alive on such a beautiful day. 
So, so what can I say? This is the Elite Gamer saying, thank you for your time, and have a great evening. Thank you guys. Bye.